Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to another episode of Arts for the Masses. The arts are alive here in Massachusetts, and I'm so delighted to be able to deliver them right into your home and get you excited about some wonderful performances that are happening right here in your community. Today, I have some dear friends with me who are here to talk about an upcoming production of The Music Man at Concord Players in... Concord. We have Nick Miller, who's playing the music man himself, Harold Hill, and Catherine Denny, who's the music director. Catherine has been on the show before to talk about The Drive to Sing, her wonderful uh, documentary and effort that brought music to people all over Massachusetts and beyond. And Nick and I go way back. Go back. Do we, yeah. should, we, should we go back? I and think we should a little bit. I think it's 15 years. I want to say 15 years, years right? I was it's like, well, it's 2024 now, so that puts us, yeah. Yeah, and 15, 15 years, years ago, we did a production of an original piece. An original piece, yep. Called On This On Moon. On This Moon. And um, I wore a lot of makeup. <laughs> My skin was angry at me for about a good, good two or three months after that. Uh, I played an, a, an alien in, oh. in it. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there will be pictures on will the screen. There? Okay, oh, awesome. perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah, no, you couldn't. You, you <laughs> but absolutely now that couldn't. now you're in your your human days. Yes, recently. yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm back in my human days, and um and Harold Hill. I mean, so exciting. It's you know? so exciting, yeah. and you know, most people post on Facebook and stuff about upcoming performances. Sure. Yeah. But I sense a certain special energy that you when oh, you when man. you when yeah. you put out there into the yeah. world that you were going to be playing oh, Harold Hill. Gosh, I mean, it's funny because Harold, you talk to people and, and, and you hear, I had that you know, Music Man record that my grandparents had and I listened to it all the time, or I had that VHS and I wore it out. And you know, my relationship with Harold Hill and the Music Man doesn't go that, that deep. It's not something I grew up with, but I, I, I knew the, the big songs and, and, I, and when I knew that the Concord Players were, were doing it, I just, I went so deep into this show, and I, I just I wanted to, to do it because I live in Concord. I I I'm I'm in the show with my with my daughter Sage, so we're 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 bringing it. You know this this sort of family community, really community theater um, experience is just and that's so and that's what I love about community theater is that. The egos get left at the door, oh, yeah. and I hope it's that way at Concord oh, Players. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. And I recently played Harold Hill my, myself at a uh, theater at killed the Mount, Mount Wachusett. He killed it. And he it was so, it. Yeah. I was more excited that you were there <laughs> to come see <laughs> my performance yeah. than I was to do it for my own parents. Oh, no, yeah. that's a lie. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm just as excited to go and see your take on this iconic yeah. character as well and see how a different group with different resources and different cast and creative team take this this wonderful show, this classic for a very good reason right. and spend your own life into it. Catherine, can you talk about why, the, why do you think this show is such a classic? Every song is a bop and it's, it's just ingrained in the American psyche, uh, all, of, all of this music, how did that happen? Yeah, well I think Meredith Wilson is a special kind of genius because not only does he get that sort of, you know, small town America feel, but he also can create parallels in some of the songs that are not immediately obvious, but when you think about it, two of the songs have exactly the same melodic and harmonic structure. They're just, one is a slow song that Marion sings, good night, my someone, my, you know, yeah. and one and Harold sings, 76 trombones led the big, but if you kind of outline those melodies, they're exactly the same. Musical tricks. Yeah, Musical and tricks. and at first they're in different keys, but then of course at the end, they when Marion and Harold are kind of getting to know each other, they sort of trade phrases, and then they're gonna sort of, you know, show us that this is actually one piece of music that he approached from two different directions. So that's kind of brilliant. I think sort of the joy that that I saw in the show was people's ability to change, mm. and mm. I think that's just a huge theme in the show mm. is. Uh, Harold arrives in this in this town of Iowa stubborn people that are very much stuck in their ways that are not interested in doing anything different than the way they have been and he brings this mischievous light into this town and by the end of it people are getting excited and falling in love and changing their perspectives on many different things um, and it happens over the course of, of a few months yeah. in, the, in the context of the show but I, I think it's just really special that magic yeah I, I mean I've, I've been thinking the same thing just not only 
how he changes this town, but how this ch this town changes changes him. Who who is this guy? What is he running from? Why is he on the move? Why can he seemingly not settle with himself? What is he looking for? And and we have that that moment, you know, seventy six trombones um, with "Good Night My Someone," where, where those 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 melodies come together and. When we did our first read through, I, I was telling the cast, you know, I'm always drawn to playing outsiders. You know, I, I love playing outsiders, and, and Harold is such a classic outsider. But you realize, you know, Marion is an outsider as well. Absolutely. And, and 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 how do these two people create this special, you know, the spark that just takes over this entire town? It's it's so clever how <laughs> how he does it. I don't think we need to spend much time talking about the, sh the show itself. There, there are so many resources yeah, available absolutely. if you're not familiar with the show. And it is a, a part of the standard American musical theater repertoire for a reason. So if you haven't seen The Music Man, check out this production. It's <laughs> going to be legit. Concord Players does a fantastic job. Uh, it's it's really one of the best community theaters in the area, in my opinion, in terms of the resources that they pull together mm. for set design and costuming, and always I've, uh, the music balance is really terrific, and it it just it's very professional. Do you, you agree or disagree? Oh, I I agree. <laughs> I agree completely. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how many people auditioned. So the fact that we yeah. had to choose thirty out of the hundred, yeah. were, there were thirty extremely. Um, high quality actors and musicians, so yeah. <laughs> it's really so, great. I, I've, I mean, I've had the opportunity to serve on the board of the Concord Players, and I'm currently on the, the board at, at 51 Walden, which is the building you know, the Concord Players rent. It's a really special building. It used yes. to be the armory. It was the armory, and it's, it's owned by the town, but um, you know, our, our arts groups are able to, to, to use it, and, and we, we maintain it. So we have um, the Concord Players, um, Concord, Concord, Band. Or Concord Band, Concord Orchestra, these are all fantastic groups. Check them out, like, it's really high level. They even do some Shakespeare, yep. and, and, and they move it outdoors That's during the right. summer, yep, too. Yep, 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 it's, it's a and, lot going on. And community on. theater in Concord goes back a long time. We're talking We're gonna, about... We can talk about who are Louisa those, May if we who want the, who to. Who are those you know? sisters? Yeah, yeah, you may have heard of them, so... And they start, <laughs> they, they, they were the creators of the Concord Players, am I right? Yeah, you know, I'm not going to go on the record breaking down exactly how it all, all ties anyway, together, but they, you know what I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Louisa women. May. They do a production of Little Women every two years or something like that, because they, they're paying their homage <laughs> to... That's right, that's Every right. ten years. Every that's ten right. years? Hey, what are we going to do? It's Concord. we gotta, <laughs> we got to show up. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Who else is involved in the team here? Who, mm. Who's our director? And So the stage director is Paul Murphy. He's fantastic. Um, we have two producers, Kathy Legu and Corinne Kinsman. And then our choreographer, Brad Robinson, is keeping everybody, all, all of our uh, blood pressure and, and cardio. <laughs> so much. <There's laughs> he's fantastic. And, and positivity. And oh, you're yeah. just, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And he's just, oh. There's <laughs> more <laughs> dance music in this show than I ever yeah. remembered. Yeah. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I'll be conducting all through it. And it's great because Brad is a musician and I've been in theater a lot. So we kind of collaborate a lot. He can say, oh, I need this to be like 130 beats per minute. And I'm like, OK, I can do that. You know, Wonderful. that's nice. How does the music in this show, it provides really unique textures, especially considering that the show was written in, what, 1957. There's some really other clever things that might be called rap these days. <laughs> but it's more, but there's a special sort of patter that isn't like the traditional Gilbert and Sullivan. It's very, uh, what would you, what, how do you yeah. qualify it? Well, one of my favorite pieces of music is actually this opening scene where there are um, about eight or ten uh, traveling salesmen that are going, they're on a train across the country and trying to sell whatever they're supposed to sell. And they're kind of taking the speed of the train and that's how fast they talk. And they're complaining about the fact that the world has been changed and their jobs are not necessary because people figured out how to make an airtight sanitary package. And the really interesting thing, so that meant that you could like put things into a building and walk in and not have to have somebody drive it to your doorstep. Hmm. And I'm wondering how that's gonna resonate to a contemporary audience where I can now in 2024 stay in my house and have someone bring to me everything I need. That's right. So I'm just curious as to how, if it'll feel like, oh, Amazon has become the traveling sales 
people of totally. our generation. Yeah. Yeah. It was I interesting speaking to the younger people in our cast trying to explain what the Wells Fargo wagon is. And we we're like, it's it's basically the Amazon of the day, but it took a, a, a long time. And it was like every couple of weeks that it came, right? Yeah. You'd be anticipating these these deliveries for yeah. you know, life changing. And then of course the other big patter song is Trouble. <laughs> and I was wondering if maybe we might have a little moment of uh, dueling Harold Hills right now. And, do, you, and do you still remember the words? Steve? I never forgot them. Hey. Because I did play the part <laughs> even prior when I was um, 17 years oh, old once in with uh, Harold Hill. kids on stage in Edison, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> love <laughs> it. This is your second time around. Yes. Okay. And okay. even before that, I was in the boys' band. Mm. Um, uh, Barney. That's my Barney oh. at the end. Oh, you were Barney. I was That's Barney. Nice. Oh. You know, I feel like if I hadn't learned the show when I was a child, mm. there's no way it would stick in my mind oh. now. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. like, oh, I yeah. can do the show because yeah. I came it, in, it was somewhere, somewhere buried internalized. inside Internalized. Yes. The dialogue, not a word of the dialogue, but definitely <laughs> but, yeah. the songs. Yeah, yeah. Sh should we do, should should we we do a little? Sure, of course. And how about you point out and, and switch us back and forth, keep us on our, on oh, our feet. So we'll just do like dueling Harold? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. yeah. All right, let's we, start. Are we going to say seated for this? Yeah, we got okay, to say seated because seated, I, right? don't, I don't have that many ca I, camera I, I operators. I hear you, I hear you. Got I it, you. okay, all right. All right, so let's start with you, ready? All right, so I think it's From the beginning. Yeah. Well. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player, certainly mighty proud to say, I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help you cultivate horse sense, and a cool head and a keen eye. Do you ever take and try and give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? Well, just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a balk line game. I say that boob can take <laughs> and shove a ball in a pocket, and I call that sloth. The first big step on the road to the depths of degrade. I say first, it's a little of medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle, and the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinchback suit. And listening to some big out-of-town Jasper, hear him tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trotting race, no, but a race where they sit down right on the horse. I'd like to see some stuck-up jockey boy setting on Dan Patch, make your blood boil, well I should say. Now friends, let me tell you what I mean. You, you got, got one, two, two, three, four, five, six pockets in the table. Pockets, pockets that, that mark the difference between, between a gentleman and, and a bum with a capital B that, that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, how do we do uh, like a sideshow version where where there's conjoined Harold Hills? There you go. Uh, <laughs> wow, nobody, nobody Slow down wants, here, Shakespeare. Nobody <laughs> wants to see that. The show's confusing enough as it is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, this show is playing April 26th through May 11th at Concord Players. Players? Website is ConcordPlayers.org, and of course, you can call the box office 978-369-2990. What else are you excited about? What are you finding in, in Harold Hill that's similar to Nick? Because uh, that was something that was interesting to me is every time you approach a performance, it's ultimately you on stage. Right, You're right, cast right. because there's some sure. element of yeah. you that is, resonates with that character. I can tell you why I think Nick is a good Harold Hill. Wait, should I start or should you I'll start? tell you. Okay. <laughs> because there's this innate likability to you. There's a real genuine smile. There's a real connection and even eye contact that you give so freely and so willingly that I can that you can sell me anything. Oh, I appreciate that. And I think you'll bring that in, and you won't have any trouble. You won't be a Harold that has to work too hard to win over these people in, in Iowa. I think you just bring that natural charm and charisma, and you'll you'll win them over. Well, in that case, I've got some real estate to show you when we're done. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Ryan. And, you know, I, you know, we were at rehearsal the other night and I said, if I can say these words about the music man, but I want to talk about the emotional depth here, you know, that's going to happen because ultimately we have this redemptive story and, and you know, the, the words are in the text, um, if, if I may, you know, there, there was there was love all around, you know, but but I, I never saw it till there was you. So I'm I'm excited to um, to reveal this character who was unable to see what was inside of himself until he found the right person to bring that out. Tell me about your co-star, because I'm not familiar with, with the, the young woman who's playing Marion. Oh, mm. Janet Foley. She's Janet fantastic. Foley. So Janet is a beautiful singer mm. and a really great actor. And I feel as if she really has explored the part of Marion that is 
as Nick said, an outsider, and that she she is trying so hard to make her family survive. You know, her father has died a few years ago, and she has a, a younger brother who is traumatized by the death of his father, and she's trying really hard to be um, to nurture him. And she really, at first, can see right through this con artist because she's a musician. She says, uh, you know, you're, you're lying. And then after, um, at, at the kind of midpoint of the story, um, the, her little brother starts to talk and, and come alive because of the instruments that Harold Hill has brought to the town. And that sort of shifts something in Marion that she still knows that he's not genuine, but she can see this positive trajectory of the town and how now people are working together on the dance committee and on the school board singing in a barbershop quartet and that all of the division that had been in the community before is now kind of galvanizing be around this controversial figure. And that isn't that often how communities come together is to say, oh, I don't know about Harold. Oh, well, I like him. Well, I don't like him. Well, that, that's okay. You know, that's, that is how we come together sometimes. I'm curious at Concord Players how the community comes together. Are there any traditions or different things that happen backstage at the Concord Players that are sort of passed down to, through history? Is there a, a, do you meet before the show and, and, assert, and do a, a pre-show circle or are there any traditions that are? Gosh, I don't know if we can reveal those things. Oh, but, uh, you know. Is it very yeah, secretive? You know, we have these, we have the costume divas and there's, there's a number of them that are just incredible. Carol Antos is, is, Heading them up um, for this show, she's she's the head costume designer, but they're you know always there on hand, making sure that everything's running smoothly and for months. For yeah. oh, for months, and then for the shows, and it's it's just so special to come down at the end, and they're all the team is standing, and you're getting a big round of applause, a little extra round of applause as 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 you come come down from from the from the diva. So um, sorry, divas, if I wasn't supposed to reveal that, if you uh, aren't in the Conquer <laughs> Players show, but all the more reason to uh, to come on out for the Conquer Players. It's we have really a thirteen-piece orchestra. Oh, fantastic! Who are? Um, we, we, it's actually a very deep and tall stage, so we've built a loft, uh, kind of behind the set where all of us are going to be um, playing live and I'll be able to see people through a monitor. And, Wonderful. but they're really fantastic musicians and they're all gonna. I wonder, where's the orchestra when I saw Titanic? Were they put in the back somewhere? That show was fantastic I, yes. too. Yes, no, they, yeah, they've been up there the since. Um, Eight for, years yeah, or so. Yeah, for, yeah. I'm gonna have to get a tour backstage and see what. We what might it, be able to hook you up. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. extensive yeah. And, yeah. and if you look, if you're on stage and you look up, it's like, 16 feet above you, <laughs> which gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of hang things and then bring them down in a second. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of fun. Excellent. Are there any particular challenges to the music in The Music Man? You know, these songs like Till There Was You are, they, they seem so simple, but I, I, there are some deceptively difficult arrangements in, in this show, especially for a, a group of, of four men. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's a, a barbershop quartet, which, um, you know, sometimes people will uh, have an existing barbershop quartet that just gets into the music band and sings it, and it's, it's a little bit more, you know, part of their culture. Um, we have four men who are all fantastic singers, and we're all learning all of the harmonies and, and um, getting coached by barbershop shop people. And no way. So, yeah, so we, have, we actually have a coaching session on Sunday where someone who has a professional um, barbershop group is gonna, you know, sing with them and and help them to like make great lines and intonation and and the amazing thing about barbershop is that you you only have four notes but sometimes if they really get in tune you can hear dozens of other overtones, overtones yeah. and it's almost like what what am I listening to and yeah. and the, and it's almost a feeling if you're singing together and it's like not quite right and then. Ooh, oh, when it clicks, there it it's is. magic. It's so exciting. And I think that's one of, the mo one of the most magical parts of the show when I've seen it is when the barbershop is singing and then Marion comes in mm -hmm. wi with, her, with her part in um, oh, Light of Rose. Light of Rose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's theater magic. That is, that is really absolutely is. theater magic. Yeah. It's been so great having you. Anything else, we, any other shout outs or any people we want to pay attention to before we, we wrap up? 
we I mean we just we have a fantastic team all around. We really hope um, folks come out. It's going to be a special special show. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And you heard it from me. Concord Players does fantastic work. The plays are fantastic too. Yeah. They put the same care and dedication into the smaller shows as they do the the big blockbusters like The Music Man. And this is a chance to see a show that isn't done as, as frequently any anymore. Mm -hmm. A lot of the newer shows, the Mean Girls and the more contemporary shows are, are really starting to creep in. So to find a group that's gonna do a classic Broadway musical with a big legitimate orchestra right. and a big 30 piece cast, you don't wanna miss it. <laughs> Concord is right down the road. Get your tickets, I'm sure they're flying off right now. <laughs> and uh, and it's been so wonderful having both of you here on the show. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you us, so really appreciate My pleasure. it. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Arts for the Masses. Yes, the arts are so alive right here in Massachusetts. So if you're a nonprofit theater group, dance group, or if you're a visual artist or a vocalist, a puppeteer, I don't care, get in touch. I'd love to have you on the program uh, and, and feature the wonderful work that you're doing. I'm Ryan Maliar, and thank you for watching. Thank you.